Hi, Jeff Gadek here from Leisure Group Travel Magazine. With me is Rodolfo Lopez Negrate, who is the COO of Mexico Tours and Board. Rodolfo, how are you doing today? Fine, thank you very much. Thank Good. you for having me, Jeff. Good. Welcome to Chicago. What brings you here? Well, we have uh, scheduled a very uh, important road show uh, to talk to our major suppliers of group business to Mexico. Uh, so we're kicking off the road show here in Chicago, uh, in which we're going to be meeting with uh, the top 15 accounts, uh, primarily focused on the incentive segment of the business okay. uh, coming to Mexico. Okay. And you're kicking this off in Chicago. What other cities are you traveling to? Well, from here we go to Minneapolis, and then we end up the road show in St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, okay. so, so the Midwestern track. Absolutely, the Midwestern track. Uh, talk a little bit, you know, Mexico is such a viable tourism destination from the United States, especially the Midwest. It's, it's a great wintertime, even summertime destination. Talk a little bit about the current state of tourism in Mexico. Um, let, me, let me share with you a couple of uh, facts that could be of interest. Uh, firstly, uh, tourism, international tourism to Mexico uh, continues to grow. Uh, through the month of June, which are the latest data that we have, uh, international tourism to Mexico grew by 3.3 percent year to date. Uh, so that's a very positive uh, indicator that Mexico continues to be a very popular destination for international tourists. Uh, by the same token, uh, as far as the number of occupied rooms in the 70 cities that we monitor throughout Mexico, uh, uh, this has grown by 2.8 percent compared to last year. So. Uh, the, the tourism is moving at a good pace, however we would like this to grow, and to grow at a faster pace. Sure, sure. And that's part of the reason why you're here, of course. Absolutely. We, uh, we, be, we felt that it was necessary to uh, spend some time with these major providers of group business to Mexico, get closer to them, uh, try to uh, answer any, any possible uh, questions or, or, or reservations they might have about Mexico. Uh, to also speak a little bit about the new programs and plans and campaigns that we're launching into the U.S. marketplace uh, and just, you know, establish a closer uh, line of communication with them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I from all accounts that we hear uh, from different countries around the world, um, tourism is relatively flat. So uh, in this sort of market economy, you must be doing something correct in order to achieve this growth. Um, what sort of drivers are you seeing? Is it new development, new destinations? Where are really the growth areas? Well, you, you have uh, different behaviors in different destinations. 64% uh, of the total business that we get from international markets to Mexico travel to a handful of destinations in Mexico, namely the beach resorts, mm -hmm. uh, all the way from Los Cabos uh, through the Pacific coastline of Mexico, all the way ending up in Cancun and Riviera Maya. Uh, so each of these destinations have been behaving in a different fashion. Uh, the most successful ones so far this year, as far as occupancy and average room rates, uh, have been Los Cabos, Cancun, and Riviera Maya. But uh, Puerto Vallarta, Riviera Nayarit are picking up right now. Uh, Ixtapa is starting to resurface again after a very difficult uh, couple of years. And uh, Acapulco is, continues to be a favorite destination for the domestic travelers. Okay. Uh, domestic meaning inner Mexico. Exactly. Um, I heard earlier this morning that one of your goals at Mexico Tourism Board is to become a top five world destination by 2018. Um, you have a lot of competition, so how do you get there? Well, firstly, let me say that uh, the U.S. is our number one market. Sixty percent of the total business that we receive in Mexico, internationally speaking, comes from the U.S., 15 percent out of Canada, and then it's the rest of the world. One of the uh, most important uh, strategies that we have incorporated is, in addition to continue to grow the business out of the U.S., uh, uh, since our market share is 16.5 percent uh, out of the U.S., we would like that to grow in a... In, 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 uh, in within the next uh, seven years up to 25 percent. Uh, we believe we can do that. Why? Because number one, we have the accessibility, we have the, uh, the best value for the, for, the, for the dollar that you're paying. Uh, obviously, air connectivity is, uh, is a, 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 a very important factor and that is better than anybody else right now. Uh, and uh, furthermore, we would like to expose the other side of Mexico. What we have said is the untold story of Mexico, which is not only that we have this wonderful sun and beach resorts, but we also have all this cultural wealth that we would like to introduce and reinforce to the U.S. consumer. 
Furthermore, uh, we have a very ag ag aggressive expansion plan when it comes to diversifications of markets and segments. Uh, we have been able to grow our business from all the international markets, uh, out of Europe, out of Eastern Europe, such as Russia, for instance, out of Latin America, such as Brazil, out of uh, Asia Pacific, such as China. Uh, all these markets, emerging markets, uh, have been uh, sending a lot of uh, uh, tourists to Mexico. And uh, this has been very encouraging for us because we have to have a much more balanced portfolio of markets. By the same token, on the segment side of the business, we have been venturing out uh, and promote very aggressively uh, uh, segments that are very specific, such as uh, adventure travel mm -hmm. uh, and such as uh, uh, all the cultural side of the business, such as the colonial towns, the, pa the Pueblos Magicos, the magical towns that we have in Mexico. Sure. It's certainly with Adventure Travel Trade Association coming to, is that Chipas, is it pronounced? Um, this fall, I think that'll be a great driver of business for years to come. Without a doubt, that is a wonderful platform. We, we feel very happy that we were able to uh, to gain the, to be the host of uh, such a prestigious event. Uh, as you know, it will take place from October the 17th through the 21st. The the uh, the registration is already sold out, uh, which is which is very gratifying. Uh, but we have many other initiatives coming up, such as, for instance, is the case of the World of the Mayans initiative. This is a big big promotion that we just kicked in. Uh, in the international markets, whereby we're promoting what is going to happen in the year 2012. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have done is to assemble the five states that uh, basically house all this Mayan wealth. And uh, we have launched a very, very, very aggressive and attractive program to the international markets to invite people to come and enjoy what is going to happen in 2012, which is not the end of an era. <laughs> and it's not the end of the world, the country. Uh, well, the way we see it in Mexico is that uh, uh, it's going to be a new era of, uh, of uh, renewal, uh, prosperity, and joy. So that's what we're trying to promote. And it starts in Mexico. And it starts in Mexico. And it starts in the Mayan states of Mexico, namely Quintana Roo, Yucatan, Chiapas, Campeche, and Tabasco. Uh, last night I was at an Israel Ministry of Tourism function and despite strong numbers in Israel, uh, one of the items that they brought up was that there's a perceived risk of violence. And uh, yeah, obviously we watch the news and there's a glamification of everything uh, and, and obviously you're working very hard to address that. Um, the challenge in this business is you can convince the group organizer that where they're going and what they're doing is safe, but because of the super long booking window, something could occur from the time that they booked to when their group departs um, that could get people skittish, for, for lack of a better word. How do you help them manage that process, and, and how do you assure them that you're doing the right sort of things? I, I, I think what is critical is that we work closer than ever with our customers. We have an extraordinary relationship with the trade in, in America, and the same way it applies to what is the major supplies of group business to Mexico. And that's the purpose of this uh, roadshow, as a matter of fact. Um, it, it's about education, it's, an, it's about information, it's about being really, really close to our uh, major suppliers of business. Uh, we recognize that Mexico has challenges like any other country in the world, including America, right? Whereby there have, they, we, we have experience in some very specific pockets of the country, some episodes of violence. And while we're very, very uh, saddened by those facts, and of course we're preoccupied about those facts, it is very important for us that we really uh, uh, make sure things or information doesn't get out of context, meaning that the major resort and tourism destinations in Mexico are safe and continue to be safe. And if you really analyze the facts and figures, you take destinations in Mexico whereby the level of crime rate compared to other parts of the world is really, really low. And I can give you a couple of examples. I might mention, for instance, a city that is very popular for tourists, that is Merida in Yucatan, the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, the crime rate uh, for every 100,000 people of population is 1.7 people. Very low, comparable to the most developed European countries. Sure, sure. Uh, compared to Miami, where it's 13.1 percent. So the message that we want to get across is, not because in Miami you have 13.1 deaths for every 100,000 people or population, you shouldn't go to Miami. Yeah. Of course you go to Miami. Miami is perfectly safe as well, right? So this is what we want to get across all the time, to make sure and give 
the proper level of tranquility to our major suppliers of business that all these major destinations in Mexico, tourism destinations in Mexico, are perfectly safe. Well, I would certainly appreciate it. That makes uh, all the world of sense to me. Education, understanding geography, I think that's one of the issues with consumers is geographical ignorance of knowing where they're going and what part of the country and, and what part of the city they're in. So um, I think that will go a long way. Uh, certainly appreciate your time this morning and uh, look forward to more group business down in Mexico. Thank you very much, Ed. Thank you for the opportunity.